Despite the backlash that I'm getting for criticizing Triple H's booking, there are also wrestling fans that are going to criticize me for criticizing Vince McMahon's booking. No doubt that McMahon was a business genius, bringing WWE from being an obscure New York promotion to a worldwide sports entertainment promotion. However, his smart business moves do not translate into epic booking. Now I'm going to point out the top 10 booking botches of Vince McMahon. WrestleMania 19, Triple H vs. Booker T. We get it. This angle was considered racist for its time. Knowing what we know now about Triple H's track record with black wrestlers, it's really unfortunate that Vince McMahon did not put his foot down during Triple H's reign of terror. The crowd was solidly behind Booker T, but the finish was flat and the wrong guy won. Triple H was already suffering injuries, but Vince McMahon insisted that Triple H goes over on Booker. Well, Triple H would work through a groin injury throughout 2003, Speaking of 2003 again... You're fired. SummerSlam 2003, Elimination Chamber match. I mean, the match itself was good. Goldberg spearing Chris Jericho through a pod, dominating a lot of the match. Shawn Michaels giving Triple H an epic sweet chin music. However, the finish made zero sense. Why? Goldberg was over. He had an undefeated streak from Backlash 2003 until then. He also won a lot of matches on Raw. The undefeated streak plus having a badass character is why the crowds were crazy for Goldberg. The timing was right. Triple H was working hurt. Instead, one sledgehammer shot and it was over. Goldberg never got his momentum back and by 2004, Goldberg was gone from WWE. You're fired. Madison Square Garden, Diesel vs. Bob Backlund. Right after Bret Hart vs. Bob Backlund at Survivor Series 1994, Vince McMahon felt that he needed a monster draw for WWE. The timing was bad because this was a very short-lived title reign for Bob Backlund. Ignoring the fact that his first championship reign lasted from February 1978 to December 1983, Bob Backlund's second title reign had a lot of potential. He was a great heel. Haters of Backlund from the territorial days finally got behind him, and Backlund didn't have enough time to prove whether he was a draw in 1994. To me, Diesel vs. Bob Backlund should have taken place at the 1995 Royal Rumble where people could have actually seen Bob Backlund lose. Yeah! Monday Night Raw, June 28th, 1999, Stone Cold vs. The Undertaker. For years, Stone Cold and The Undertaker have wrestled each other. However, Stone Cold vs. The Undertaker for the title on Monday Night Raw was bad timing. Now, we could argue yes. It did give Raw the highest rated segment of all time with 10 million people watching. But at the same time, if you put the title match on free TV and the title changes hands, then the pay-per-view buys will suffer. That would be evident when Fully Loaded 1999 had 360,000 pay-per-view buys. Not a smart move having the title change hands on free TV. Yeah! LNSL 2019, Bray Wyatt vs. Seth Rollins. This is without a doubt the worst LNSL match of all time. Why though? Red lighting throughout the whole match. Bray Wyatt as The Fiend constantly no-selling the curb stomp. A restless crowd in Sacramento, California, and an idiotic referee throwing the match out. This is not the first time a Hell in a Cell match was thrown out, but it was the worst finish for what's supposed to be a no disqualification match. What in the world was Vince thinking greenlighting this garbage? Extreme Rules 2017, Bayley vs. Alexa Bliss. I've seen a lot of bad women's matches in the Attitude Era, but in the modern times, this was just trash. The match was boring, the kendo stick swings were stupid, and this essentially buried Bayley as a babyface character. It wouldn't be for another two years before Bailey would become a great heel. Tragically, Triple H would mismanage Bailey when he took over booking for WWE. Great American Bash 2004, Undertaker vs. The Dudley Boys. Now, the match itself was not the big issue. The big issue was the stipulation. If Undertaker didn't lay down for the Dudley Boys, Paul Bearer would be buried in cement. It was not just the stipulation, but how it actually played out on the pay-per-view. Undertaker would beat the Dudley boys, but he would bury Paul Bearer in cement, rendering the angle pointless. This was one of The Undertaker's most embarrassing moments. Super Showdown 2019, Undertaker vs. Goldberg. Both Undertaker and Goldberg went on record calling this the worst match of their careers. I agree. What were the reasons? 
Goldberg did an idiotic thing by headbutting a door very hard, giving him a concussion right out of the gate. So the match started all right, but then Goldberg hit his head on the steel post trying to spear the Undertaker. That was when the match fell off the rails. The worst thing happened when Goldberg went for a jackhammer, then dropped Undertaker on his skull. Then Undertaker tried to tombstone Goldberg, but a slip-up caused Goldberg to land directly on his head with a tombstone pile driver. The match was a total disaster. Super Showdown 2020, Bray Wyatt vs. Goldberg. This was the low point of Bray Wyatt's career. How do you go from being a captivating heel with the Wyatt family to a jobber for a man in his 50s? This was the moment where wrestling fans were truly outraged on social media and justifiably. Even longtime Goldberg fans have admitted that this was the wrong call. Not only did Goldberg not execute the jackhammer correctly, Bray Wyatt looked like a total fool. Vince McMahon may have made the Wyatt family look strong in 2013, but when Bray Wyatt returned as The Fiend, McMahon did not want to book Wyatt strongly as a captivating heel. The main event, 1988, Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant. This booking decision was botched for multiple reasons. Andre the Giant was already pinned by Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3, then they clashed again at the inaugural Survivor Series in 1987. At the same time, a new white-hot heel named the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase came into the picture. DiBiase's rich, corrupt character was so huge, DiBiase wanted to buy Hulk Hogan's world title. Instead of Ted DiBiase being named the number one contender, we instead get a rematch of Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant on February 5th, 1988. This was bad because DiBiase was a white-hot heel. Hulk Hogan was a four-year champion. Hogan was suffering from injuries and needed a break. This was the time to put the title on DiBiase to amplify his heel heat. Instead, we get a Andre Hogan rematch with a bunch of shenanigans and a terrible finish. To make matters worse, there was going to be a twin referee angle that was going to happen at WrestleMania. Thankfully, that idea was scrapped. The finish was so terrible, the title was vacated, forcing an awful tournament at WrestleMania 4. I don't care what people say. 33 million people watching on free TV did not translate to a good WrestleMania 4. The tournament was a total cluster, the main event had way too much interference, and Hulk Hogan stole Macho Man's WrestleMania moment by not walking back to the locker. And those 33 million people never returned to watch WWE. That's how bad this booking decision was. Originally, the idea was to have a dusty finish between Hogan and DiBiase in which Hogan passes out from the million dollar dream. DiBiase wins the title and the crowd riots. Then emerges a number one contender for the title by the name of the Macho Man Randy Savage. DiBiase and Savage have a heated exchange on the go-home show of Saturday night's main event. Then WrestleMania 4, it's Macho Man vs. the Million Dollar Man for the title. Andre tries to interfere. Hulk Hogan evens out the playing field. Both men fight back to the locker room. Macho Man comes back, hits the flying elbow, and the crowd erupts. But no, Ted DiBiase gets screwed out of a title match. There's a cluster of a tournament at WrestleMania 4. Hulk Hogan steals Macho's thunder when it was supposed to be Macho's moment, and everything else in 1988 wasn't up to standard like it was last year. Hulk Hogan sabotaged a simple booking formula, and Vince McMahon booked things very poorly throughout 1988 and 1989. Macho Man would have a much better title reign in 1992, but that first title reign in 1988 was terrible.